Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. I'm doing a new reggae rhythm. What do you think, Natasha? You're really good at like, um, you've got pretty good rhythm. You think? Mm -hmm. Like in what way? You can dance. You can rhyme. That's true. You can, that's pretty much it. I can rhyme though? What do you mean? I rap? Yeah, like, you know, even with our daughter, you can like always come up with like the beat and the words that rhyme. Do you want me to rap right now? I would love it if you didn't. Okay. Did you want to be a rapper when you were young? Um, I did. Do, have I ever told? I don't know if I've ever told this on the podcast before, but I did want to be a rapper when I was young, like every young boy in Oakland. And I actually came up with a nom de, nom de plume. I came up with a rap name, like every rapper must have it, right? What and, was it? Well, the first initials of my name uh, are MM. Moshe is one of them. My first name. Uh, you'll have to Google or Wikipedia me to find out what my legal first wow, name is. Wow, you hate it that much. I mean, I don't really want. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay. I don't hate it. I just, listen, what? The point is, my initials are M-M-K. So M-M. Can you guess what my rap name was? M-M? Yeah, it was M-M. I thought that would be a really snappy name for a rapper. And you know what? I was right about that. It just wasn't uh, right you for me. You weren't the one. I wasn't the one. But I do remember... This was pre-M-M? This was, I'm sure, it, it was definitely pre-M-M. It was when I was like you know, seven, eight years old. But was he already Eminem in Detroit? I don't know. He could have been a young a young boy calling himself Eminem. But it's so crazy to think that if I had kept that name and emerged before him, I would have the rap career that Eminem has. You know what I'm saying? Just think about that. It's got to blow your mind. Do you want to hear a rap that I still remember from when I wrote the Eminem times? No, oh, thank you. I mean, I know one for okay, real. Okay, fine. It's really bad and I don't remember every word, but I, do, you want, do you want to hear it? If we must. Do you not want me to? I mean, I feel like I've said no twice and you still want to do it. So <laughs> no, I didn't know it. I was going to do that. Was I was asking if you wanted me to freestyle. No, now, do it. Do it. Okay. Thing. It goes, and I don't remember all the lyrics. This will fall apart eventually. Okay. And it also has incredibly sexist and I think even homophobic stuff in it. This is a rap you've written before? It's when I was like seven years old. <sighs> okay, go. I'll, okay, it goes. I don't remember it all. So we, might, we probably won't hit the sexist or homophobic stuff. It's quite a setup. Okay, it goes like this. You ready? No, goes, but keep going. It goes, I make money, but that's and that's not funny. I use my money to get honey from Bunny, who used to be my girlfriend. But now we're just fucking as if there had been no end. You were seven? It's eight, nine. I don't know. Do you want to hear the rest? I make money. I'll start over. No, I please. make money. I got you. But that's not funny. I use my money to get honey from Bunny who used to be my girlfriend but now we're just fucking as if there had been no end to our relationship yes she's a trip but she's fine she got the best damn pussy i tasted in a long time what it tastes good it tastes like fish but okay so we could stop there wait you and, said it tasted like fish well that's how inexperienced i was i was like it okay you it had tastes- just heard that women's pussies <laughs> tasted like fish and i was like it tastes good and you were like oh i like grouper <laughs> yes i i loved a good grouper back then with a with a zesty uh caper butter sauce and that's what that's that's how experienced i was so uh, it tastes good it tastes well, like I fish i think we got the point honey. But you don't want to hear the rest of the lyrics the people want to hear it okay i don't actually remember anymore so let me ask you this. Wait, so it tastes you're... good. It tastes like fish. On occasion, oh, but on occasion she can be a real bitch. That's why I don't take no shit. And then it got bad wow, after that. You, oh, you think that rhyming fish, bitch, and shit is good <laughs> for an eight-year-old? So you said pussy when you were an eight-year-old? Yeah, man. I'm from Oakland. I mean, your mom was deaf. I guess she was like, "Good job, son." Yeah, or she just didn't say a thing. Okay. She didn't. She didn't know. That how sophisticated my rhyme pattern was. The original Eminem. The original Eminem coming at you. Got to make that into a TikTok. Yeah, I, I know you love TikTok. I love Meta. That's what I love. You know Meta? No. Oh, you didn't hear about Meta? No, what is it? Facebook rebranded today as Meta. Really? Yeah, like they've been in, in the news getting called out by whistleblowers. Thousands of pages of incriminating documents and uh, a whistleblower from in their corporate structure saying that they knew that Instagram was ruining the self-esteem of young women and that they knew that uh, that misinformation was fomenting political unrest and violence. They knew all of that stuff and covered it up because they wanted to make more money. And they were like, uh, okay, we'll, we'll take care of this. Sorry about that. We'll call ourselves Meta. 
Will that do the trick? Wait, Facebook is now called Meta? Yeah, except that Facebook, the uh, the only thing anyone ever uses Facebook for, you know, the, the, the website Facebook? Yeah. That's still Facebook. So what's Meta? Everything else. Okay. It's a little bit Meta when you think about it. They're basically full of shit. And don't want to do anything about the actual corporate, the actual ethical rot that's occurring within that uh, company. They cool. could, they could change the world, but they choose not to. You know, I read an article today saying that you are elderly if you use the laughing emoji. Me? Anyone? I'm elderly. Yeah, like Gen Z. Oh, Gen Z doesn't respect the. the they don't like your laughing emoji. They think the skinny jeans are laughing at you. Mm-hmm. They're laughing mm-hmm. at all their millennial bosses, which I kind of feel good because I'm out of it. I'm mm-hmm. not a millennial. Right. And uh, they say no side. I know people who are changing their hairstyles now. They don't want to have those side. No parts. more side parts. I always had a middle part, you know, but also. That's what's up right there. You get it. But see, here's the thing. I don't really want to be young. Right. I like to be old and rich. Right. It feels like. And like, you want to be Cruella de Vil. You want to be. Know. You want to be up in your in your uh, house up on Sunset Boulevard. Talk about cut away from me. No, that first of all, that's not Cruella de Vil. I know that's someone else, a different paradigmatic old rich person no i i i I was just being reductive oh were you now you were being reductive i'm excited to be old lady well good for i'm excited to grow old with you it seems like it would be cool and funny and fun to know everything to have wisdom to like not be like a slave to your phone my agent i have a hollywood agent at the william morris endeavor agency today said something really interesting to me he said we're the perfect age Although I am a bit younger than you, so maybe you're not exactly the perfect age. But I'm Betty White's age. Yeah, you are the age of Betty White. You're the age of um, of Mort Saul, who just passed away this I'm last week. I'm excited to be Betty White's age. I think I'll be the next Betty White. Uh, I think you will be too. I think you're as talented as she is, and honestly, you're less racist. Uh, but the uh, I, and Google it if you don't believe me. I'm joking. I know no information on Betty White. She's a national treasure. Um, the, my my agent guy said we're the perfect age because we are old enough to have experienced life without uh technology and to have watched all of this stuff occur but we are not so old that we are uh overwhelmed baffled and confused by it we can still we can still understand the technological world and we can still remember the pre-techno techno world it's kind of the perfect age to be right like if you're a little older than we are then you're just like what's even happening anymore no you're not every every elderly person's addicted to their phone too yeah but they don't get because it because of the pandemic and well, because I they don't get that, it they didn't right? have filters up anyway the point is i'm not addicted to my phone anybody that tells you i am is uh, is uh, got a bridge to sell you natasha uh, that is the truth okay but can let me just finish my tirade for a second oh i'm so sorry i didn't know you were doing one i just think it's an interesting idea that like you're like oh no if i use this i'll seem old who but- anything like if you use a laughing emoji if you oh. wear skinny jeans whatever the thing is i just don't understand why trying to be young should be the goal because mm-hmm. you're i'm not young i'm in my 40s mm-hmm. so why am i trying to be young no i hear you on that uh, at the I'm same just slightly time confused by it well at the same time i think this whole idea of like you know i i think a lot of people in life equate getting older with the, the kind of getting older that is giving up you know, you've seen that oh, kind of old person, I too. It's just like, you know what? I'm not going to try and look cool anymore. I'm not going to try to keep up with good music or good oh, or good or good movies anymore. I'm just going to like sit around and read a book. I don't think that's like a that's like not someone's decision, though. That's just like rot. That's depression, I guess. I but guess, the point is, as people get entropy. older. No, but the truth is, as people get older, they they sometimes will get less cool. They'll get less. uh They'll get less, they'll get more rigid, more cantankerous, and less cool. I don't mean cool like hip, I mean cool like awesome. They get less awesome. And I think the point is to grow old in a graceful way where you stay awesome, but you don't try to cling to youth, but you try to cling to the things we should all be clinging to, which is the, the finer things in life, fun, entertainment, education, edification, And also and like community. being on the cusp of... Anything social justice, like changing with the times. Oh, so you're as like a you SJW. Can. You're a total <laughs> no, but SJW. I'm saying like not being like, why can't I be like? You right. can still be old like this. and have like social justice, but now you have all this intelligence and wisdom that you can bring to the and experience that you can bring to the table and actually help things. The worst kind of old to become is the kind of old that uh, that screams at a mountaintop. Why isn't everybody old like me? 
also exactly. And I also just realized the reason why they emphasize the youth so much is because that's who the corporations sell things to. That's so they're totally always true too. obsessed with because we've made and they our make decisions. articles to the you know for the, to the youth and making them like their importance seem a little more. But also, you know, we obviously need we, young people to be at the forefront of environment and helping make only a fans. I mean, without young people on OnlyFans, it's just going to be a gr- it's going to be a dusty graveyard. You know that Gen Z mm. girls are trying to get. By the way, I like this, that they get paid time off for their periods. For their period cramps? Yeah. I mean, I do think every success... They should. Sure. Sure. Yeah, You sure. never had cramps. You don't know. I didn't say they shouldn't. I said sure twice, and then you kind attacked. Kind of rolled your eyes. I don't know. I don't know that that's true for well, sure. Well, I have to say I'm probably not going to keep doing the laughing emoji. You know why they sell to young people, by the way? Why? Why the, all the corporations only care about selling to young people? They haven't made up their minds. Mm. we our age they think you've already made up the minds of the companies you like and that's true for for us you know we like we like the companies we like we like uh rothy's uh helix mattresses uh potentially we might like bonobo socks we don't know yet we sent an email last week to see if we like them it depends on if we get that contract we like um um other things oh you know i would like a solo stove i would like um, any kind of camp gear. I would like a free surfboard. Moshe. Um, what? I want some surfboards. Anybody out there? A surf, surf you company? You have enough surfboards. I only have two. I need one more right now. You have four. I got two. You have two in our garage. Okay, that's true. You I have, have two four. two at your friend's house. No, that's true. I have four, but I have four. That I need a fish. That's what I need. Just like Bunny. Remember how her pussy tasted? Oh, yeah. I well, need a fish surfboard. I forgot to ask you really quickly before we take some calls. Yeah. Or before we listen to some secrets. Who, who, why bunny? I don't know. It rhymed with money. You were like just thinking of That's this like girl. the name of a hot girl named Bunny. I didn't know any. I never I had, have an aunt bunny. I never kissed a girl. You know why her name was Bunny? Uh, tell me why. They said she fucked a lot in high school. Whoa. She fucked like a bunny. I guess. Damn. That's, I want some, uh, some honey from Bunny. So it does make sense. It tracks. I'd like to get some honey from Bunny. Uh, aunt Bunny, if you're listening to this, go ahead and shoot me some honey. And uh, honey, my real honey. We, can we play a secret? Yeah, but let me just say, too, can we just make a pledge? What's our pledge? We don't have to try to be like people who were born in 1997, do we? No, I don't think so at all. But we also shouldn't try to uh, ever see people that are born in 1997 and just be and go like, kids these days, because you want to be like cool enough to, for them to think you're cool and funny. Well, the way you stay cool is to just try to be involved in the world and really know what's that. going on and try to like help things in the best way you can mm-hmm. but i don't think we have to be preoccupied with seeming like we're young when we're in our, our 40s which by the way 40s is the old age of youth i think oh that's a good quote I didn't 40s is the i know but it's okay but you know why why i got wisdom you do you got that wisdom you know I what i gonna got try to keep rapping but i'm not as good at it as you well you got to start when you're eight the young m&m cutting your teeth on the corners of eight mile would you like to hear a secret? Yeah, but what do you got? I don't know what I got. Okay, let's hear a secret. Hey, guys. I have a secret. Um, my spouse and I don't have that many television shows we can watch together, and he gets, like, kind of upset about that. And I like to, while we're watching the shows together look up the spoilers so I know the ending, but I don't tell him that I'm doing it because I know it would make him really upset. Okay, bye. Psychopathic behavior. Moshe hates this so much when we're watching something and I, because I'm really... Like oh, I said, this. This I got is a different. lot of wisdom. I'm pretty psychic. I'm like a good writer. So I kind of know what's happening. <laughs> but if I say what I think is going to happen, he's like, why did you say that? That is the most annoying thing a person. But I'm just talking. A person can do while watching a TV show with another person, especially one they love, is constantly guess what's about to happen I next. don't constantly guess. Yes, I just do. sometimes know. <laughs> You're not always right. I know. So why do you get so mad about it? Because it's so annoying. Because if you are right, you've taken away the surprise from me. Moshe fast forwards through like next week on. Yeah. Like that's not, how much you hate it. I, more than that. When I'm going to a place and I'm going to go travel to a place, I don't like Googling pictures of it. What? I don't want to see pictures of a place I'm about to go. I want to go to the place. Really? Yes. Yes, that's yes. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with me is I got joie de vivre and I want to see what I see, not like look it up on the internet and be like, oh, okay, I guess I'll go see that. 
Why would I want to be, why would I want to get one-tenth of the experience of the experience I'm about to have? That's dumb. What? Yeah. And also you spoiling. You think Googling a picture of a place spoils it? I don't think it spoils it completely. I don't, I want, when I walk into a natural wonder to go, I've never seen anything like this. Not, you know, I did see something like this on the internet right before I left on this trip, but this is really impressive. That's the way you like to live. I don't judge you for that, but don't judge me and don't spoil my TV shows. My friend Howard Kramer takes it one step further. He doesn't even want to travel. He's like, I'll just go on YouTube, Google Hong Kong, check out some videos, <laughs> see what's happening. Let's have him on the podcast soon. Yeah, he could tell us about all the things he hasn't he done. Was, he, but no, I mean, he's like, why do I need to go there? That's I can- dumb. <laughs> That's a dumb perspective. It's funny, but it does. it's not, some, not a good idea. I mean, do you want to travel right now? Yeah, I do. All right. I, 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 in fact, do. I want to get out. I want to go. You, you know who else wants to travel? Get COVID in Greece. Yeah, that sounds greasy COVID. That sounds good. A little, little feta. You know, um, you know, that sounds real good. You know who else wants to travel? Who? Our young daughter. She told me the other day, I want to move to Paris. I'm like, how the fuck do you know? That's just because she thinks they have like a lot of meringue there. Or something. And they do. She's not wrong. And I told her, I said, when if your mom keeps pushing it, I'll take you to Paris and we'll stay there forever and you won't ever have to see the bad lady again. Anyway, she started crying. She was not into that. Uh, should we play another secret? Yeah. Hi, Natasha and Moshe. I, my secret is that I work with um, kids with developmental issues, so kids with like autism and Down syndrome, and most of the kids that I work with have are nonverbal or have, like, very low communication. And so when I'm at work, I will fart. And if it fails, I will always blame it on the kids because there's no way that they can deny it. And I have gotten away with it every time. I've done it, like, probably every other day. So, yeah. I don't know if that makes me a bad person, but... Anyway, thanks. Bye. Okay, here's the thing. Fart, fine, but don't blame it on them. Well, have you ever farted and blamed a dog? Well, well why do they have to blame? Like, it reminds me of that. No, it's basically she's saying she works with. It reminds you of what? Sorry. Well, we went to that birthday party the other day, and there was that clown there. Yeah. And he was like, every time the kid would get something wrong, he made all the kids at the party go, he got it wrong. Wah, 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 wah. All at the same <laughs> it's time. Like- and then insane. the kids started crying. But what is, Our kids started crying. Well, I'm just how saying. How does that remind you of that? Because the idea that like you farted and making no, a kid like embarrass she, no, them. No, she's saying she works with nonverbal developmentally disabled kids. So she farts and then the other teachers will come in and she'll be like, oh, Brian, did you poop? Did Every you other poop? day she's saying that? What would be crazy is if one of these people's origin stories out of the dark corners of their mind and, uh, you know, like autism, sometimes you get lost in your own mind, but sometimes you can come out of it a little bit. It would be really a wild origin story if one of those people came out of um, their, their their autism and became verbal again um, in order to say, I'm sorry, lady, I didn't fucking fart. Okay? That wasn't me. Like, so you do this every day, and it was like a miracle, you know, like a miracle of uh, recovery. But the whole miracle of recovery was around that guy being like, I'm sick and tired of you blaming your foul teacher farts on me. I'm a, I'm, that would be cool. And we could make a movie about it. I'm just saying she doesn't, have to say, <laughs> she doesn't have to say who's farting. Well, she's saying she's embarrassed. Like another teacher comes in and it smells like a fart. And she's like, uh-oh, what do I do? And she goes like, oh, it must have been Donnie. Have you ever done that to a do- I've done it with a dog. Or... I'll be more bold to fart around a group of dogs. Because <laughs> I'm just like, there's no way for anyone to know it's not one of the dogs. You know what I'm saying? Our dogs don't really fart. That is not true. Well, And I- even if it was, I would say it's not true so that I can keep farting. Don't get me wrong. They suck. But I'm just saying they don't really fart. <laughs> These guys fart. All right. Another? Yeah, let's hear another one. Hi. Oh. Natasha and Natasha. I am a sex worker and um, the kind of the term du jour that uh, I use and people in the industry use is escort. I'm a gay escort. And well, generally, a lot of my clients are straight 
men, well, they're not straight, obviously, if they're um, paying me for sex, but they are married men, married to women. That's a lot of my clientele. And, um, but specifically, I have one client who um, is a cash sub. If you don't know what a cash sub is, it's someone whose kind of sexual fetish is um, just getting their money taken from them by a uh, by a master, you know, a cash master. Um, <laughs> so this guy pays me three hundred pounds to go and see him, and all that happens is he um, gives me a blowjob for about an hour, well, you know, just intermittently, while I sit with a laptop and online shop. <laughs> um, with his credit card that he has given me. Like, when what? I get there into the room, the credit card is right there on the bed. And I'll just fill up baskets at different online shops. And um, and then as I'm, like, putting the, you know, card details in, he's like, yeah, fill up a nice basket. So that's one of them. Um, and uh, so, yeah, he's I, I kind of drain him for about £600 um, each time. And... Uh, <laughs> Another one that I have is, so my personal sexual fetish, I'm going to wrap this up by just telling you something, you know, that is actually a secret, I don't really tell this to anyone except my sexual partners who I do it with, is that my kind of thing, my fetish is um, ball torture, and I like having my balls slapped really hard, and I have a client who pays me to do that to me. In fact, he gags me with cash, he fills my mouth up with cash, then he slaps my balls very, very hard. Um, yeah, and that's my secret. I love you both. I've known you. I followed you when you were um, not together, and now you are together, and you're both absolutely hilarious, and I love you. This guy sounds hot. I mean, this guy sounds lucky is what he sounds. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? To be a, to be a sex worker. A and, cash master? And you What's walk, it called? Cash sub. <laughs> You're a sex worker. You're walking through the world. You know you're you're in the gig economy. You're working job to job, and then you walk in this new client. You get there, and he's like, "I just want you to know, I my fetish is to have you online shop while I suck your dick." You must just be like, "Cha ching! I have found the holy grail." I mean, imagine how dope I want that. I can want. Can you that. get your dick sucked for an hour though? How does that work? I, you, I bet you you can. If the session of you shopping for Air Force Ones ends when you nut, you're gonna be like, keep sucking and So someone can suck your dick and you they pay you? Yeah, that's that's yeah. Wow. That's some gay shit though. Like they're and, and these these men are mostly not a lot cheating of, on their There's wives. not a lot of women out there that are looking for men uh M- male sex workers so that they can give them a blowjob for an hour and then give them money and say thank you for coming it's it's some man on man shit i see by the way i'm curious um and maybe our sex worker listeners can help us it must be incredibly difficult i was talking to somebody about this the other day it must be incredibly difficult to find a straight or or at least willing to pretend to be straight uh, uh sex worker male sex worker rather so, so like if he a, sounded kind of straight. No, he was gay. He said he was gay. Oh, okay. What I'm saying is, if you're a woman or you know a woman that needs a sex worker, it must be kind of difficult to find a male, straight male sex worker to hire. That's probably the smallest demographic. Straight male sex workers? Yeah, somebody who works as a sex worker that what they do is fuck females. Uh, I'm I sure they exist. That. I just bet they're harder to find. I bet gay men and women that fuck men because of the clientele. There's very few clients. I wish I could talk very to few that. women that want to hire a sex worker. I wish I could talk to that guy because I, I do wonder like, you know, get well, first of all, getting your balls slapped. OK, maybe that comes from I wonder what is the origin of that. But mm-hmm. I'm really curious about the man who wants to the cash sub yeah like that what's hot about that was gotta come from something well yeah well it's like you want to be humiliated and the way that you find the most arousing humiliation is to be financially humiliated right is that from maybe you're from a rich family or something maybe that is what it is it's like some weird guilt um natasha yeah i unfortunately do have to go you I want haven't me to a- tell you about my when I used to work for a dominatrix? Oh, yeah, I do. I think I already told you, but it's worth repeating. Yeah, repeat that. Well, once- Actually, before you do, yeah. could you stuff my mouth with cash? 
once I, uh, I, I had to go with six other girls and we tarred and feathered a man and then stu- put squirt guns up his Whoa. asshole. S- you tarred and feathered him for That's real? That's what he wanted. With tar? It was like honey. Oh, honey and feathers. And then you put feathers all over him. But tar is feathers. And then he wanted to stick his asshole in front of us, and we all had to like shoot it with a squirt gun. Did you put the gun into the butthole? No, it was was far away. It was far away. You squirted it from afar. This is (laughs) pre-COVID. To be honest, it doesn't sound that COVID risky. It was kind of fun. Was it hot? Oh, and we had to yell insults at him. Like what? Give me one. I don't remember. All I remember is he wanted me back interesting i bet mistress juliet yeah if i was Can in she come back by the way if my fetish was being insulted i would have been coming our whole marriage <laughs> but i Honey, mean that's a funnier line than you're giving it credit i get it if i had a fetish for being insulted yeah i hear you i would have been you think i'm i insult in you a, a state lot? of orgasm for our entire marriage Right. Well, you don't have a weird fetish. These no. People with fetish. I wish is, I did. Right it now. comes from something. You know what my fetish is? What? Being with the woman I love. No. Staring in her eyes, telling her I love her. Hmm. You know what else my fetish is? What? It's my call. The callers calling and giving us good secrets. Like tonight. <laughs> Those were good, weren't they? Yeah, they were pretty good. If you've got a secret, why don't you leave one for us? 213-222-8608 and send us an email at endlesshoneymoonpod at gmail. Yeah, so the phone number is to leave your secrets and the email is to be on our podcast and ask for advice. Uh, you can yeah, also, don't email us your secrets, seriously. But you could you could call us and uh, tell us, uh, ask us uh, for an advice question that you're too scared to actually come on the pod for and we can do it anonymously if you want to do that. Find us on Instagram at endlesshoneymoonpod. Apple.co slash Endless Honeymoon is where you can listen, rate, and review. But also, everything's on YouTube. And you can subscribe there. Thanks again to this week's sponsors, Talkspace, Bite Toothpaste, Milk Bar, Sunday, Ship Station, and Thrive Cosmetics. I love Thrive Cosmetics. I gotta say, I'm wearing them tonight. This is what I have to say. I've decided the companies that I like to shop at uh, as an older person, and those are them. Thrive Cosmetics, Milk Bar, Ship station, talk space, bite toothpaste. I'm I'm Sunday dog food. I'm done making choices as a consumer because those companies are the best companies in the world. Well, there's certainly companies that we have tried everything that and and really liked them. That is correct. We definitely have uh, sponsors and uh, well potential sponsors, and we try the product and we're like, you know what? This that's is na- not our level. That's nasty. That's what we say sometimes. We go, that's that's a little bit <laughs> nasty. <laughs> So I'm not bringing that to my listeners. Or it's just something that, yeah, we're, we're just not really that into. We just turned down a $65,000 offer to do an ad for Blackwater Security, the uh, private security company that decimated Iraq. So that's so you know we have some filters <laughs> that we go through. Uh, Natasha, guess what? What? Uh, I have to go, but I do love you. Oh, I love you too. Goodbye. Goodbye.